Hi, my name's Dan, and this video provides a quick guide on installing Bookstack on Ubuntu 24.04. Now, ahead of time, I've already created a machine to install this in, and I've created a VPS on a Kami Cloud, previously known as Linode. So as I said, we're going to be installing on 24.04, and that's Ubuntu LTS release. So that's what I've selected here. I'm creating this in the UK, London, because that's the nearest location to me. And I've gone ahead and just selected the cheapest server. One of these $5 machines should be plenty enough for Bookstack. And I've already gone ahead and filled out the rest of this and added my own access via SSH and created this Linode, which I have now running here. And I'm going to be setting this up on a domain. So I'm going to have docs.bookstackapp.com pointing to this system. So in my DNS settings, I've got my DNS on the name cheap. I've pointed the subdomain docs to the IP address of the server under an A record. So this IP address matches the one provided to me by Linode for my new machine. And in the terminal here is where I have got SSH access to the machine. So I've used the SSH access details provided to me by Linode, and then I've gone in to access the machine via SSH. And the only thing that I've done so far is update the packages via sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade, and then restart the machine just to make sure I'm running a current up-to-date instance of Ubuntu 24.04. So let's go ahead and install Bookstack. So from the bookstackapp.com homepage, I'm gonna go through to install, otherwise you can go through the documentation pages and then find installation there. And then in the menu here, we'll find our Ubuntu version, so 24.04, and this gives us details for a script to run. And this will pretty much do all the core setup for getting an instance going. As it warns here, this is only for a completely fresh operating system. So if you've already tried to run this and you've run into issues, or if you've got any existing web stuff on the system, then running this script may clash with the existing content on this server and not run properly. So this is for only a fresh Ubuntu instance. So here we're just gonna follow these instructions with running the script. So we'll copy this first command and then paste that into the terminal. And then ch mod plus x, and then pass in a reference to that file that we've just downloaded. Again, that is provided here, so you can just copy and paste that. And then lastly, we're just gonna run that with sudo dot slash and then that installation script. And we're running this with sudo, so we have root level privileges on the system. Although I'm already logged in as root, so it really doesn't make a difference in this scenario. But this is especially important if you're logged in as a non-root user that won't have access to install things on the system. So I'll run that to get the script started. And as we run it, it will tell us that it logs a full output to a log file within the same directory. So that if there is any issues along this process, you can either have a look at that log or you can keep that handy if you need to get support because that will have a lot more information as to what might have gone wrong. But now it prompts us to enter the domain or IP address that we want to host Bookstack on. So in our case, that was docs dot bookstack app dot com and just to reiterate that is a domain that i own and have set up to point at this server you can't just enter any domain you wish under the hopes that once this install runs you'll be able to go to that domain and it will magically work with this bookstack instance you have to have owned that domain and have that pointing at this system otherwise you can just use the ip address for example here the script has picked up that we've got this public ip address and it's suggesting that we could use that you could also use a local network address if you only need to access the instance locally. But we'll continue with our chosen domain that we have configured. And we'll, so I'll press enter now. And now it's gonna go through the various steps to install Bookstack. So all that's left for us now is to sit back and wait for this to complete. This first step will typically be the longest because it is downloading all the required packages from the internet. So this can very much depend on your system performance as well as your network performance. Okay, that seems to have completed. It's gone through all nine steps displayed here and it's provided us some information and this is quite important information that you may want to note down. So it's provided us the default login email and password as well as typical access URLs depending on the current IP address or in this case, the domain that we provided. And it's also telling us the installation path, which is var www.bookstack. And this is especially important to note because this is a location that you'll need to come back to if you're doing things like running commands or performing updates. And finally, it's reiterated that that log exists just in case there are any issues or we find the instance isn't working, you might be able to look into a log for extra context. But with that installed, let's try going to this address. And there we go. This seems to be a working instance. We've got to login page. Let's use those default details. 
and it looks like we have working access. Just to be sure though, let's create a book. And we'll create a page within that. And just to be sure that all things are working, we'll also upload an image. Perfect. Everything seems to be working there. Now, one thing that you might want to do or that you absolutely should do at this stage is go up to your admin profile menu here, go to my account, access and security, and change the password for this initial admin account. And then you also might want to go to profile details and update the email address to be one that's relevant to you also. And something else that you might want to configure at this stage is setting up email itself. So the script wouldn't have configured emails to be sendable. For example, if we go to settings and maintenance and use this send a test email option, then we're going to get an error because it's using settings which aren't configured yet. So if you wanted to set up email, then this is done in the .env configuration of your BookSack instance. And we can find that by going to that path that was suggested earlier. So cd bar www slash bookstack. And then we can edit the .env file. Now by default, because this has a dot at the start on Unix like systems like Ubuntu, this is a hidden file by default, so it might not always show up, but it should be there. So we use nano, which is a command line text editor. And then if we go down towards the bottom, you should find mail SMTP details. And there's a handy link here as well that takes you to the Bookstack documentation with further information how you might configure that. But basically, you will need an SMTP email server. Quite often, you can use your personal email account. Sometimes you have to dance around some security settings to allow that, but that is quite often possible. Otherwise, if you're a business, you might have an official SMTP service that you use internally. Now, coming back to our Booksack instance, one thing that we might want to upgrade now that we've got it installed is HTTPS support. So at the moment, we've currently got this insecure little padlock icon in the URL bar saying connection is not secure because this is served over standard HTTP, not HTTPS. Yes. So the connection between the browser and the web server is not currently encrypted. So I'll now show you the processes of getting HTTPS set up on an instance like this using Certable and Let's Encrypt. And these are free systems. But keep in mind that this process I'm going to show requires you to have a working public domain as I have docs.booksacapp.com. And because that is publicly pointing at this server instance, I'm going to be able to set this up following the process I'm about to show you. But if you're using an IP address or an internal domain of sorts, then you may have to look into alternative techniques for setting up HTTPS if you require that on your instance. So to set this up, we're going to use Certbot, which makes it nice and easy to add HTTPS to a web server. So we can come down here to this configurator. So we can say my HTTP website is running and we're going to choose Apache because that's what the 24.04 install script installs by default. And we can say it's on the Ubuntu. They don't have the relevant version for us, but we can say Ubuntu 20 because that's the closest. Now we can just follow these steps down here. I'm going to skip straight to step four because I know that these first three aren't required or well, we're already SSH'd in. And snapd is something that's installed and running by default on modern Ubuntu versions. And we haven't previously tried to install any of these setbot packages because this is a fresh instance that we've installed onto. So we're going to go down to step four and I'm going to copy and paste this into my terminal. Okay, that looks installed. Let's go back to the guidance. We'll copy in this one to make the certbot command available. Okay, and now we can run this command, which will run certbot and specifically get the certificate for Apache and configure our Apache web server in the process to use that certificate. So as part of this process, it will ask you for your email address because this is used for renewal information and urgent notifications. And I have in the past had security notifications from Let's Encrypt who these certificates are issued by advising about issues or sooner expiry than was previously expected. So I'm going to enter my personal email address. Please don't use mine, use your own. And yep, I've read all those terms and conditions and I agree to them. And it's asking me if I'd like to share my email address with the EFF which I've already done previously. So I'm going to put no here. And now it asks us what domains do we like to activate HTTPS for? So it's found that we've got a site configured for docs.bookstackapp.com in this case. So you should see your site in here. So we can put in a number one because this is labeled with a number one there and we'll hit enter. Okay, that seems to have successfully completed. It says we received our certificate and it expires 
quite soon. So these certificates don't have a very long lifetime, about three months. But by default, in the way that we've installed CertBot, it should automatically renew that for us every two months or so before it, the old certificate expires. But it's something to keep in mind, just if your site is suddenly has access warnings or issues in about three months, then it may be because there's an issue with the renewing system of CertBot. So that'll be where to look if you're finding issues at that point. But anyway, let's jump back to our browser. So we're currently on HTTP, because that's what we were on before. But if we click into here and manually type in HTTPS forward slashes, and then the page does load but it looks very broken. But because we haven't got any browser level like big red security warnings, it means it is working, but something is of course wrong because books action look like this. And that's because we need to tweak something on the bookstack side as well. If I jump back over to that terminal, so we're still in this far www bookstack path that we entered earlier to look at the .env file. And that's what we need to change once again. So I'm gonna do nano.env to edit that file. And this time we need to come down here to the app URL setting. So this would have been something that the install script configured during the process depending on what we entered and by default it will set it up on HTTP so we just need to tweak this and add an S in there and that's all that we need to do so now we save this file which we can do with control O and then enter and then control X to exit and now if I jump back over to the browser we'll refresh the page we've now got a lovely working bookstack instance and it's on HTTPS we've no longer got that security alert there and we've got a good padlock there connection secure and in our page, everything seems to be working. Although behind the scenes, I know that this image, because we uploaded it before we changed that URL to include HTTPS, this is still loaded over HTTP. And that can sometimes introduce some issues or at least some security warnings. And if you performed a change there, which completely changed the URL to you know something else like wiki.bookstackapp.com or an IP address or a complete different domain, then this image would be broken at this stage. So to fix this, we can run a command. So we go to the Bookstack documentation there's a section on commands and specifically it's the update system URL command and commands are run from our bookstack installation directory so the same place that we edit our .env so if we jump back over to the terminal we'll use this command to update our bookstack instance to ensure any old HTTP references are using HTTPS so again I'm making sure that we're in this var www bookstack directory and in here we're going to run php artisan bookstack colon update hyphen url and then the old url so again following the documentation here it takes the old url first and then the new url go http docs.bookstackapp.com and then we'll do the same but with HTTPS so HTTPS docs.bookstackapp.com and I'll hit enter there and it's going to ask if we want to proceed because this is a potentially dangerous operation so make sure that you've entered those in correctly so those look correct to me so I'm going to hit yes and it's going to ask have we made a backup because again this is dangerous but in our case this is a new instance I haven't got anything important on there so I'm going to put in yes and then it's going to perform the required replacements in the database. So we can see it updated a row in the pages HTML and updated one of the images, which would have been our Barry image that we uploaded earlier. So you can just double check our Bookstack instance, refresh this page, and there's no issues at all there. Everything went fine. So that's our Bookstack instance running on Ubuntu 24.04 with HTTPS added. Now there's a lot more that you can configure with Bookstack and there's a lot of things that we've skipped fast that I consider kind of out of the scope of this guide. For example, we haven't done any security hardening on the VPS instance itself. So there's a number of steps you can do to make a public VPS instance like we've created a bit more secure on the public internet. So it's things like tweaking SSH settings. You can ensure you've got a firewall set up and various other bits. But if you'd like to get further into that, some good search terms would be Ubuntu 24.04 security hardening and there's plenty of better guides out there on the internet about that. In context of Bookstack I would recommend if you go to our documentation and you can find a page on security it might be worth just to read through this page just so you understand any security considerations about the platform and any steps that you might want to take in terms of security. But otherwise that covers just about everything that I've got to run through in this video. I hope this helps you set up your own instance and I wish you luck on going through that process. If you have any questions, feel free to put a comment below. It is quite difficult though to provide proper support on YouTube. So alternatively, you can also go to our project on GitHub or you can alternatively jump into our Discord server and create a thread in our 
help and support forum there. And also feel free to let me know if this guide helped and everything worked for you, or if you face any tricky scenarios along the way that you managed to solve or help me when creating this for the next Ubuntu LTS video. But with all that said, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.